Merry Christmas, everybody. So today we're going to be doing all things potatoes. First of all, we're going to be making a crock pot potato that we can freeze and use for a later date. We can either, you know, just throw it in the microwave or we can throw it on the grill and it's gonna be a great way to like quicken up your meal so you're not spending so much time having to bake a potato. The second thing that we're gonna be doing is some uh, hash brown potatoes. And these also are going to be something that we're gonna prepare ahead of time to freeze that we can use over the holidays. So you may have noticed that I have this really cute little Christmas apron. Well, it's reversible. The other side of it is for Thanksgiving. It's little acorns and I actually put a little applique of a Christmas tree that I made and it was so simple. I used that uh, reversible apron that I did uh, on another episode and I'm gonna link it above in case anybody wants to make it. Now, I didn't film making this one on camera, but it was exactly the same. It was so easy. So if you're interested, you know, give it a try. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just wash and dry our potatoes and take out any of those little eyes or anything like that that you have on your potatoes and just get those ready for the crock pot. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just put my potatoes in the crock pot. So what we're gonna do now is just give our potatoes a little spray. You can use olive oil, any kind of oil actually that you have. And I'm using a little bit of grapeseed oil. It's usually my oil of choice. I kind of like it. I think it's, it's good. It doesn't really burn. And I just think it's a really nice oil to use. Then what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of garlic on my potatoes and a little bit of my Homestead Patch seasoning, just like this. You don't wanna overdo the seasonings cause I don't know how you're gonna use it, but I usually just rub the oil and the seasonings into the potatoes like so. Super easy, you just wanna make sure you get a little bit of seasoning on all the potatoes and that's it. Super easy. <laughs> you don't need to put any water in there. You don't need to do anything. All you're gonna do is put the lid on your crock pot and you're gonna set it to low and leave it for four and a half to five hours, depending on how many potatoes you have in your crock pot. So while those are cooking, let's get started on our hash browns. You're gonna start off doing the same thing. You're gonna wash and dry your potatoes and look for any eyes or any dark spots on your potatoes and take those off. So now that I've got my potatoes washed, I've got some water boiling on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my food processor to get my potatoes uh, cut into shreds. Now I always turn my food processor off when I'm, when I'm dealing with any of this because see what I mean how nice this is. So I'm just cutting these into shreds right now and uh, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna soak them in some water. So let me show you what I have now, what I was able to get done in that short period of time. A couple of these just aren't, I don't know, they're kind of a weird size, so let me show you. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Literally, this took me all of about, I don't know, a minute, two minutes to shred all these hash browns. So all I'm gonna do at this point is just throw them in a uh, bowl of water and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want them to brown. And you can see they're very starchy. These are russet potatoes. And we're gonna have to blanch these for a few minutes, but it's gonna, again, it's gonna be a very fast process. And just having it sit in here will keep it from getting brown. But you know how long it would have taken me to do these shreds? And these are just, they're perfect. They're all the same. 
they just look amazing. So we're gonna let this sit in here for a few minutes until the water comes up to a boil, and then we're gonna put them in there and blanch them, and we'll finish this process. Now, if you've never used a food processor before, this is a large one that I have, which is really good for things like this. As I said, I got this all shredded in about 15, I don't know, maybe like, I was gonna say 15 seconds. It was probably more like a minute. And, um, I'm going to link this down below. This is a Cuisinart, and I've got a small one that's a KitchenAid that I use really for all my smaller things. But it is a huge time saver, and I'm going to link it below if you're interested. I have a, a link you can get that through Amazon. So I'm definitely a gadget kind of girl. <laughs> I just, I love anything that's out there that will make my life easier. And I've learned with time, yes, there are times when I want to use something simple like a cheese grater to grate up a potato, but when I have like 20 potatoes that I'm working on, no, I don't, I don't want to spend an hour grating potatoes or cheese or anything else. So I've almost got my water up to boiling and we're going to put these shreds in here. And I also wanted to make a note that I didn't peel these potatoes. I like to leave the skins on my potatoes. If you would like to peel your potatoes before shredding them, you go right ahead. Many people do. Okay, I've got my water simmering here, and so I am going to just spoon in some of these hash brown shreds, and I'm gonna let them simmer in here for about, I'd say probably close to four or five minutes. I just want them to release some of the starch and get blanched a little bit. So I'm only gonna do half of these. I have that many potatoes. So as soon as these are done, I'm gonna go ahead and drain them. And then I will put the other batch in. You're seeing it correctly. <laughs> it's a salad spinner and it works amazing. So I fill it up with water and I put some ice cubes in it. And this is just so that my hash browns will stop cooking. So I just put them right in here and I'm gonna leave this boiling water in here for the time being because I'm gonna go ahead and do another, another load of these hash browns. I know a lot of people like to dry their hash browns off on a towel, but I just think this works so much better and it's so much faster. And honestly, it just does a better job. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my hash browns back to this really hot simmering water. And we're gonna leave that on there for another four or five minutes. So all I'm gonna do is just drain these, drain the water out of here, and then I'm gonna put them through the salad spinner. All right, so I drained the water out of the bowl, and all I'm gonna do is give this a good spin. Now we're gonna get a lot of water out of it the first time. So we're gonna do this several times because we wanna get as much water out as possible. Look at all that water, it's like a cup. <laughs> Now I use my salad spinner a lot. Sometimes I use it when I'm, uh, you know, cleaning my vegetables from the garden. It just does such a good job of getting the water out of the vegetables. I just love it. So the next thing we're gonna do is put a piece of parchment paper onto a cookie sheet. And we're just going to put our shreds right on top of it. So it's really important to get these uh, shreds back in the water so that they stop cooking. They've already heated the water up and I had nice cold water in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some ice to this. Because we definitely need to get these shreds cooled off so they don't continue to cook. So now we're gonna transfer some of these shreds that have already been kind of dried off a little bit onto another cookie sheet. We just wanna make sure that we can get these as thin of a layer as possible 
because we're gonna do something called flash freezing, where we basically put these in the freezer so that they can kind of semi-freeze, and then we can uh, go ahead and after they, we do that so basically they don't stick together when we freeze them. Now when these shreds are all done, we're gonna do the same thing. As Soon as they cool off, we're gonna run them through the uh, salad spinner and get as much water off as possible. And I guarantee you, if you try this process, I think you're gonna like it a lot better than trying to get these all, you know, the water out of them from a towel. I just think this does a great job. So I'm gonna take these out to the freezer and I'm gonna get the next ones ready to put out there. So our potatoes are done. Boy, do they ever smell delicious. Really good. So they're not super, super, super tender, but they're enough that when we reheat them, they're gonna come out perfect. So I think actually I'm gonna leave one out for dinner. Actually, I need, to, I need to let them all cool. So let me put them on a plate. We're just going to let these cool on their own and then we're gonna, I'll show you the next step. So I went through the same process with the shreds and now I'm just going to be laying these all onto these two pans. And again, we're gonna take these out to the freezer and flash freeze them. All right, I'm gonna put these out in the freezer with the others and I'll be right back. So my potatoes are cool enough. All I'm gonna do now is wrap them in some foil. And I'm gonna freeze them in a gallon size Ziploc bag. So one of the things that I like to do when going through and getting my hash browns ready to freeze is I like to use my food saver and vacuum seal my hash browns. So I typically use two bags. One of these is gonna be equivalent to the, to the uh, one pound, 16 ounces that you're gonna get in the grocery store. And the other is just for like a single or a double serving for breakfast. So what I do is I just put the hash, kind of break the hash browns up a little bit and I put them in a bag and then I just vacuum seal them. I try to break them up the best I can and this typically takes like almost a whole tray when I do the larger package. And it's perfect because when I go to unfreeze this and make my my hash brown casserole for Christmas, it's gonna be so easy. It's just gonna be, you know, something that I can do. I actually put everything in frozen. I don't even defrost it. And it comes out perfect. I mean, you can have the hash browns in the grocery store, and I'll tell you what, I use those a lot. I mean, sure I do. But whenever I can do the fresh, as long as I can do quite a few, it's worth my time. So what I'm doing, as I said, it pretty much takes a whole, this whole small tray. And I'm just going to put all these in here and I kind of break them up a little bit. I want them to be kind of like you get them in the grocery store. I want them to be uh, completely broken up. And I'm gonna use my vacuum sealer I'm gonna put it on moist, because I do have a little bit of water here from the... And there you go, vacuum sealed hash browns. These are gonna be fresh and delicious come Christmas day. Now what I do for the smaller packet is I just put in enough that I think will be good for one or two people. And same thing, I just kind of break them up as I get them in here. And I try to only do a couple packages at a time. And the reason is that I don't want these defrosting. I mean, the whole point is that I got these put together so that I could, you know, get some hash browns 
going. So this is really going to take about a half of a tray, I think. I like this because it's going to be something that I can have and enjoy with my family. Or I can have it by myself. And you know how it is with hash browns. I mean, if you've got any left over for the next day, they're just as good. So I'm going to actually make these a little bit bigger because I'll make them big enough. My son's going to be coming this week with his girlfriend. And if they, they're coming from out of state, actually. So if they want to have some fresh hash browns with their their breakfast, I've got them all ready to go. This is a nice packet right here. And again, I do the same thing. I just kind of break up the little hash browns, just like this. And again, I just put it in here. So I ended up total with six bags of hash browns, two of the really large ones, and then four of the smaller ones for individual or two or three person servings. And then I've also got the crock pot baked potatoes in the freezer. So all I've got left to do is clean a couple of these trays and I'm done. I've got all kinds of yummy meals that I can make for these in the future. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for, uh, coming along and working with all these potatoes, and I will see you next time. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.